Andrea Koppel, host of the Time for Coffee podcast, where you get firsthand career advice into the jobs and industries that interest you the most. And before we start today's show, I have a quick favor to ask you. If you haven't already, I'd be incredibly grateful if you'd give us a rating and a review on iTunes. And if you're like me, you need to do it now because you'll forget later and because it's the best way to help others who may be in search of career advice to find this free resource. So press pause if you haven't done it and do it right now. I'll wait. Thanks so much and enjoy today's show. Hey there, Java Junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or 10 minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career triple shot K-Cup with my guest, Dr. Stephen Gundry. I'd like to begin by asking you, when you were an undergrad at Yale, majoring in, and this is a mouthful, human evolutionary biology, did you know what you were going to do with that degree, Dr. Gundry, when you graduated? Well, believe it or not, when I was 10 years old, I read a book in my elementary school library called All About You. And it was, I decided that then and there that I was going to be a doctor. And literally kind of everything I did from there on in was, okay, what, well, you know, what steps am I going to do to become a doctor? But did you have any inkling then that one day you'd be the guy talking about a leaky gut? I mean, had you ever even heard of a leaky gut back then? No, in fact, I mean, 15 years ago, if you had asked me what I thought about leaky gut, even though that was my you know, career at that point, I would have said that's it's mostly pseudoscience. But now we know that whatever ailment most people have, it's actually because of leaky gut. In fact, Hippocrates, 2,500 years ago, the father of medicine, said all disease begins in the gut. And he didn't have our sophisticated tests. He didn't know about the human microbiome. And he said, all disease begins in the gut. Now, the guy was absolutely right. So, no, I didn't know about leaky gut. But interestingly, my study at Yale came back, I guess, to haunt me. 20, 22 years ago, when I was professor and chairman of heart surgery at Loma Linda University in Southern California, I met a man who changed my life, Big Ed, I call him in all my books. Big Ed basically cleaned out severe blockages in his coronary arteries that couldn't be treated with surgery or with stents by changing his diet and taking a bunch of supplements from a health food store. And it was the most amazing thing I ever heard of. And I didn't believe that you could do that. And so as Big Ed is describing what he was eating, And I said, hold on, that's my thesis at Yale in how a great ape became a human being. And I was a big fat guy back then, and I was running 30 miles a week and going to the gym one hour every day and eating a healthy, low-fat vegetarian diet, and I had arthritis and high blood pressure and pre-diabetes, and I was doing everything right. So I called my parents, and I said, hey, do you still have my thesis? And they said, yeah, you know, it's in the shrine. And I said, you know, send it up to me. I just heard a guy follow my thesis. And so I put myself on my thesis and I lost 50 pounds in a year and all my, you know, chronic diseases went away. And I was so shocked that I started putting patients that I operated on, on this program so that they could avoid me. And after a year of doing this, I actually resigned my professorship at the height of my career, and set up an institute where I basically teach people to eat 
to reverse whatever they walk through the door with. Wow. Well, before we pick up there, I want to rewind the clock back to your new Yale graduate. You go to medical school. How did you come to pick your specialization, which, as we both said, you didn't realize when you had written that thesis at Yale that it was going to become the foundation of your life's passion today? Yeah. You know, it's interesting because my family at that time lived in Atlanta. And my father took me aside and he says, you know, I'm so delighted that you went to Yale and graduated. But if you want to continue your further education, may I suggest a state school? Because quite frankly, I'm tired of paying for you. And I said, hey, you know, sounds good to me. And it's actually one of the really one of the best things that ever happened to me because the Medical College of Georgia in Augusta was very, very interested from day one of medical school to partnering you with a mentor. And since your audiences, I'm sure, would be very interested about, you know, mentors and what they can mean to you. So I was partnered with the head of pediatric cardiology, Dr. William Strong. And I would follow Dr. Strong once a week through his clinics. And this is a first year medical student. Medical students in general don't see patients until their third year. We're just basically you know, booking it and sciencing it. So here we were seeing patients. And I became infatuated with children's heart disease. And eventually, quite frankly, you know, he says, you know, you're going to make a great pediatric cardiologist. And I said, you know, Dr. Strong, I love finding out what's wrong with these kids. And, you know, but I got to fix it. I, I, he says, ah, geez, you know, you know, what a waste. All right. So I, I became a very you know, famous congenital heart surgeon. So at the same time, I became associated with the head of cardiac surgery at Medical College of Georgia. And I think your audience would like to would understand, you know, I, I, I did the, Dr. Ellison was also my mentor, Robert Ellison. And it came time to get into a residency program in cardiac surgery. And Dr. Ellison was a fine Southern gentleman. And he said, you know, stay. He said, I, I think you should go to the University of Michigan for training. And he said, it was the original heart surgery program, thoracic surgery. And he said, I think, you know, that's where we should get you in. And I said, well, you know, how do I do that? And he said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call up a professor there that I know and we'll get you an interview. And so I get up to the University of Michigan and Marvin Kirsch has my CV and I had written a paper as a medical student, you know, a laboratory paper. I was very, very proud of it. And he looks at this and he says, you know, this is the worst paper I have ever read. This is this is horrible research. And, you know, I'm crestfallen. I'm going, well, you know, that, thank you very much. You know, I'm obviously not coming to Michigan. And he says, but Bob Ellison says that you can do the work here. And if Bob Ellison says you can do the work, then that's okay by me. And so. This uh, is the importance of a referral and having a network. Yeah. So I get started at the University of Michigan, and I meet a very, very talented resident, John Brown, and I go, wow, you, know, you were really good. How did you get so good at being a heart surgeon? He says, oh, I went to the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, for my two years of research, and I got trained by Dr. Glenn Morrow. And I said, oh, how do you do that? He says, well, you got to, you know, get an interview and you got to get invited. And I said, well, how do you do that? He says, well, I could call Dr. Morrow. And so I get an interview with Dr. Morrow and at the end of my first year at Michigan. And I'm there with Dr. Morrow. And he said, well, I'd love to have you come, but my spots are all filled for when you would normally start a year from now. I'm sorry. And so who's listening on the intercom but his secretary? 
And she walks in just then and says, Dr. Moore, don't you know that one of the people who was supposed to start in two months can't come? And you have an open. And she said, she said, well, he said, well, he said, Joan, Joan Fuller was her name. He said, he's a goddamn intern and I'm not going to have an intern. And she said, Dr. Morrow, you need a person. And he, so he turns to me, he says, who do you know at Michigan who could vouch for you? And I said, well, you know, I'm fairly new there, but Marvin Kirsch could probably vouch for me. He says, all right, you go home. I'm going to call Dr. Kirsch and I'll call you next week. So I go home and he calls me next week. He says, well, I talked to Dr. Kirsch and he says, you're not the best he's ever seen, but you'll do for my purposes. (laughs) That really built your ego, didn't it? (laughs) But so, you know, it's, it's funny when I uh, when Dr. Robert Ellison from Medical College of Georgia retired and we had a Fenschrift for him, I was one of the invited speakers. And the title of my talk was, if I hadn't been there, I wouldn't be here. And for your listeners, it was actually based on an old, old song by Johnny Hartford, who did it for Glenn Campbell. And I think there's probably nothing truer than your listeners could get from this interview is that it's these seemingly chance things that happen. And when you look back and you you are the gratefulness I have for these what appeared to be chance encounters which were not chance at all, but yeah, this is actually what happens to people. I'm giving you a virtual double high five because I believe in something called magic. And sometimes it's like black magic, the way the pandemic has been, where shit happens in your life. And there are other times When it's fairy dust magic, we cannot plan it. We have no idea when it's going to happen, but we have these chance encounters. We have these magical moments that if we're open to them, can forever change our life. Absolutely true. Yep. Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to this latest episode of t for c And if you're interested in learning more about my coaching services for confused college students and recent grads, feel free to check out the Time for Coffee website under the coaching tab at time, the number four, coffee.org or text me at 202-236-5712. That's 202-236-5712. Thank you.